Starliner Media. Starliner Media presents Music Night at the Majestic with your host, Michael Boswell. All right, it's time once again for Music Night at the Majestic. And with us tonight, Neville Staple. Neville, welcome to the show. Thank you, Michael. You know, they call me Michael, the original Rude Boy. <laughs> yes, they do. In fact, yeah. let's just put that up there right there. The original yeah. Rude Boy, Neville Staples, our guest. The original Rude Boy, Neville Staples, from the special. Talking to you, Michael. <laughs> yes. Well, tell you what, you've got a new album out from the specials and beyond. So yes, before, that's right. Before we get into that, though, yeah, uh, I, I find you to be an interesting guy. And oh. so let's start with your musical influences. I think I, I've got a grasp on a couple of them, but uh, yeah. let's hear it for straight from you. Uh, Scar, Skatlight, Derek Morgan, um, John Holt, you're going to come in right back up. Um, Men in the Scar guys. Um, there's quite a few of them, but most of them passed now. So yeah. my influence is from, from there because my dad uh, and my family, they used to listen to a lot of Scar, Blue B, and things like that. So I kind of grew up, I grew up listening to it, and I grew up loving it. Absolutely. I'm going to guess that you probably have had a uh, Prince Buster album in your collection at some point. Yes. And um, to be honest with you, I've, I've met his. Uh, his sons now, and funny enough, uh, Sugary, my wife, she's got a, um, a festival called um, Skarmouth, and all the old Jamaican, I say old Jamaican, all the legends, um, she gets them over from Jamaica uh, for the festival, three-day festival. So I meet these uh, legends, right, at Michael, and I say to my wife when she gets, uh, you know, when she books them, oh, yeah, I love, oh, yeah, that's my favourite. Then she tells me, Oh, Neville, they're saying they wanted to meet you. And I'm, I want to meet them. I, I find that so strange, Michael. I'll tell you that now. Yeah, I would think. Because you, you're, from your perspective, it's always the other way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I grew up listening to these guys. I used to play them on my sound system. And all of a sudden, my wife brought them on to do these um, the Skarmouth Festival three days. And I'm saying, whoa, nice. I'm not talking to them like I'm talking to you. That's very cool. So, I'll tell you what, we've got uh, got a number of uh, viewer questions here. So, why don't we you know, get right into those? And we've okay. got, got a question from Joey, who says, Ask, from, from is there? it true that you started as a roadie with the specials back when they were the Coventry Automatics? Yes, it's it is true. Um, I met them first, anyway, while they were rehearsing at the Hollywood Youth Club. And I heard this, uh, this kind of scar. Weird kind of scar. So um, I looked around and I said to it, Jerry, is there any chance of me coming around um, while you're doing gigs to tidy your wires up? We didn't say roadie. I didn't know roadie then. All I knew was to tie your, um, tidy your uh, wires up. And I got in the band being a uh, roadie. Hey, whatever it takes. Hey, hey. Michael, I'm always, I'm always there. Anything to do with music, I'm there. Different type of music. I'm there, Michael. I hear you. Now we got another question, and Victor asks, uh, I'd read your first show as a member of the specials was at a show opening for the clash. What do you remember about that night? Um uh, it's uh, for the clash, um, to be honest with you, uh, because I I kind of love the punk. So when we were supporting the clash. It was kind of strange for me because you've got to remember, I, I grew up listening to um, ska and then I got into specials listening to um, punk. So when we supported The Clash, it was just out, out of this world because, like I said, they're the first um, punk band that I got into. It was kind of weird. Um, like I said, weird um, because I wasn't used to it. So when I'd done it, when I, when I was on stage, it was like, whoa, yeah. Absolutely. Now, next up, uh, Mark wants to know, how did the two-tone sound originate? 
Well, the two town sounds originated because Joe used to listen to a lot of uh, ska and blue beat. And then at the same time, uh, the, the punk was running itself then. The punk was happening. So because we were having a lot of racial problems at the time, and uh, we used to live, or perhaps they lived together in Coventry, um, black and white mixing Asians. So at the time it got to um, working and doing that stuff, we thought, okay, he says, okay, let's get mixes up together and have uh, the black music mixing up with the, the punk, which was kind of uh, really cool things at the time. Yeah, absolutely. Now, next question. Sherry wants to know, how did Elvis Costello come to produce the special's first singles and LP? Um, because we used to like him. Um, we, we, we heard him play and he liked us. That's the first thing. He liked the specials and he wanted to work with us and we wanted to work with him. So that's how that came about. Now, what do you recall about those sessions? <laughs> it was kind of strange because uh, working or talking or meeting somebody who you liked, like I was saying to you, it was kind of nice. I liked it because remember this first time I got into like big studio recording. So to me, Elvis was a big, big star uh, compared to you know what I knew of. It was great working with him. I felt a bit like, Ooh, but it's, it's fantastic. Well, I'll tell you that the thing that strikes me on on those records is it it's uh, unlike some recordings where you can tell that there's a lot of you know multi tracking and layering what have you. Those records sound like you guys basically just went into the studio, put on a show, and happened to record it. Well, Michael, that's what it was like in them days. We didn't have time to oh let's do a double track or oh, let's do that. Like when I used to do my stuff um, that you hear on the specials, I just made it up as I was in there. I didn't write down, um, I, I, um, what's it? I'd never see you with a monkey, man. I made it up. You know what I mean? I, 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 I'd see you with a monkey, man. Everything I've done like that, what I made up. Everything you hear, um, toasting in the special songs, I just made them up after I went along. There weren't no double tracking. That's how we used to record in them days. No double tracking in the studio. Do it. Well, it, doing so captures the moment. Well, well, Michael, I think even now um, we kind of we well, see, we kind of do that. We try and do that as much as we can, even from this album, from the specials um, and beyond. Because I'm used to doing it that way. When I go in the studio now to do anything, that's what I do. Um, but the band's used to me doing it. Our band and uh, myself and the wife should be when we're in the studio. We just either write while we're in there. We don't, all right, we'll hear the music. The band does the music. So what we do, me and my wife, we just sit and write to it, make it up as, as we go along. We don't think, okay, let's do this. We start off with, it, it could be lockdown, that song lockdown uh, that we done. We just made it up about what was happening around us. So, it's kind of different recording now, to be honest with you, Michael. But we get it done, to be honest with you. We get it done. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, talk, talking about the new new record, uh, there's some tracks there that I really, really uh, like. Can't Take No More. Oh, oh, yeah. That's about what's happening now. Um, that was done since this lockdown happened two years. We were just working, and then all of a sudden we stopped. And it was, oh, no, we can't take no more of this. Even, um, Musicians that we and um, new ordinary people who wasn't musicians that we knew. It was like, oh, when is this going to end? And we're thinking, oh, it's the same here. Two and a half years without doing any shows. So that song would reflect that. Yeah. Now, how about "Don't Let It Pass You By"? <laughs> That's another one. It's the same thing. Don't let light pass you by. So if you're sitting around not doing anything. So you think to me and my wife says, oh, don't let, don't let life pass you by. Um, it, life is passing everybody by because with this virus thing. And it seems like, what are we going to do? So life is just going away. It's passing us straight away. 
So that's what that song is about. Um, not sitting around, but with the virus. It's and some people just the life is just passing by with them. Yep. I'll tell you, you've got uh, a really nice cover of "Stand By Me" on there. Why oh, you, you know where that? that? You know where that came from? Um, because my wife, Sugary, um, she's been so fantastic before we got married, and even now, even when I had that accident and with the car, she's looked after me, and she's on stage as well. But that one was dedicated to Sugary. And right, why she says about me, but that song was because of how the way she was, how she was with me. It, it's it, the record's really nice, and that's just it's a classic song. Well, I'm glad you like it, Michael, because it's not like, oh, we're going to do this one called Want It to Be Great. It's like I said to you, when we do songs, it's just what we feel, and because of how I felt, I had to do something. Although it's a cover, we was asked to do. A couple of covers, but that one is because how uh, she used to look after me and how uh, she still looks after me. Because to be honest with you, I've got my knee problem, but that doesn't stop me on stage. But she's seen me through all my illness, everything. She's fantastic. That's wonderful. Well, I'll tell you, talk about, about uh, kind of like, yeah, changing things up to digress for a moment. The more specials album. Had a totally mm -hmm. different sound, you know, than the first one. Yes. What propelled that change on the second album? Because Jerry, he just wanted to change. But if it was us, um, the, the other rest of the band, we wanted to do an album um, like the first album, similar, because you didn't want to change straight away. But Jerry, because he, that's why they call him the general, he wanted he wanted to change. So that's why the um, second album was how it was, because that's how Jerry wanted it. But the rest of the band wanted us to kind of carry in the same vein, not just change like that, but Jerry, no. Oh. Well, I, I, I got to tell you, th that's, that's, a, that's a favorite album of mine. The second one. Yes. I, don't the, get me I like them both. No, 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 and, Michael, a lot of people like that one. Well, well you know, yeah, I, I like different. when... Yeah, uh, when somebody brings, uh, yeah, artists bring in new mm. flavors, new atmospheres, what have mm. you, to the music, uh, mm. keeps it from getting stale. You know? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But you know, but when when an artist does that, you risk, you know, you know, half the people are gonna you know want more of the same, and then the other half are gonna go, hey, this is great. So you always run that risk of yes. <laughs> offending, you know, half your fan base probably. Yes. You know? But, but uh, Michael, I don't, I don't uh, offend you because you like the second album. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 because no. I like the second album as well. I just think for most of the fans who was really into specials from the start, it kind of knocked them back a little bit. But yeah, yeah we we would have changed as we progressed. It's like with um, this album, uh, my new album here. It's how I would have. I'm still got that um, that feel of what I used to do in the specials and before that. It's mm -hmm. just what's in me. That's how I come across with it. If you hear the other album I've done before, compared to this one, a lot of people have said, uh, "Oh, never we thought you was going to do more ska." Ska. So, so, so um, there is ska in it, but like you said, we stepped up a bit. We're doing something new. Mm -hmm. which it seemed to be going down pretty well, uh, Michael, uh, which is like oh, fantastic. But uh, I, I didn't get the same thing. Oh, you've changed straight away because I guess it's me on my own. If it was like the whole band, like the special whole band, then some people might say, oh, well, it's changed. We're not the same special. We get that a lot of that. Um, when people put stuff on Facebook, oh, I don't like that because it doesn't sound like the specials. And then next thing I thought, oh, well, oh, never. I love how you've done yours. It's, it's still got that uh, that flavor to it. You've changed it, but you've still got that kind of scar, punkish, different kind of feel to it. The different kind of feel is what I um, I kind of 
I've grown up with. As we've been going on over the years, I've been moving along, still keeping what I do of what, how I used to record songs, or how I record songs. I put a little bit of element from 60s, 50s to 20s. I kind of mix what I've got in there and what I grew up listening to, Scar, I kind of change it around a little bit, as you can hear on this new album. So I'm, I'm still doing the same thing, but differently. Yeah, well, you, change just for the sake of change to me doesn't work. No, you're no, 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 no. Up because you're now including other influences that you have. You can and, tell. Yeah, then that's when it works. Like, for example, there's the the, uh, the Rex Garvin cover, Sakatuum JB. Oh, yeah, I remember really that. Really nicely. I just made that up as it went along. Man. That was Brad stuff. But I made up um, um, Casino Royale. Oh, all that time of stuff, you know. No, I'm, I'm uh -huh. uh, da, da, da. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that one. Yeah, absolutely. Then, so that was uh, well. You're right, too. Michael. You're right, Michael. That was kind of different as well when we were in the first first time round album in the specials. Um, that stuff was so good. Brad was into Northern Soul. Yeah. Now, continuing the the, the theme of changing it up. Fun Boy Three. Oh yeah, I, I I'm being honest with you. A lot of people don't like Fun Boy Three, and a lot of fans don't like Fun Boy Three. I said don't like, don't like the music because oh, it's not like the specials. Yeah, but like you said, we changed a bit because we we're getting all that from um, from the specials, and we wanted to change it a, a little bit. But when we changed it a little bit, we are just went in there. We didn't have no musician. So it was the three of us just messing around on, on um, what's it called it? On, just on percussions and stuff like that. We just went in there. Limbaugh used to play, he plays guitar, so he'd be playing guitar on that. I used to be playing bongos and stuff like that um, because I was into percussions as well. And uh, Terry will play little percussion as well. So to be honest, all three of us done um, Fun Boy 3. And a lot of people used to say, oh, I don't like the Fun Boy 3, but I did. I like I liked the first album we done. And then the second album, that was different. Well, what I liked was how you guys, yeah, incorporated different types of rhythms. <laughs> and so you had that variety, but you were yeah, exploring something new. Well, but well, that's what I like about uh, the uh, Fun Boy 3 stuff. It's like, we have not have an arrest, but let's try and see what else we can come out with. Just make, not, not because it's just made, made up, just how we were feeling. Mm -hmm. And that's what it was. We're doing this special song, really giving it. Then after a while, when we had to change from to the second album, we thought, oh, no. This, the three of us, we can go and try something else different, which seemed to have gone down a lot. And like I said, I like the Fun Boy 3 as well. I really do. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, we have, have a, a question from Shelly who asked, uh, Fun Boy 3 had some great tracks with Banana Rama. How did that collaboration develop? Well, Banana Rama, we found them, or Terry found them at a gig. We were, we were doing some gigs. They were doing some gigs. Uh, in London, and Terry heard them, and we needed some girl singers. So it was like, oh, that's what they like. And so we invited them to the studio. First time in the studio, they didn't, they couldn't sing. They didn't know what to do in the studio. And I used to help them a lot. So even though you'd hear them say, um, Neville helped us in the studio, made us feel comfortable, and stuff like that. So the Banana Rama, when we first met them, they they couldn't, they were fr not frightened. They were a bit apprehensive, like, ooh, in the fun boy three. And so with that way, I was saying, nah, just calm down and you do it. And they just relaxed and got into it. Like, but when they, when we first, oh, Terry met them at a gig in London, they couldn't sing. They've never done no recording. And then we'd done those songs with them. Then they, they went up to where, where Pete Waterman Stock Aiken and Waterman. Mm -hmm. 
and they did you know pretty well. Oh yes, oh yes, very well, very very well. Because um, stuck Aiken and Waterman, they were really hitting it at the time as producers and stuff like that. So yeah, Pete, Pete Waterman got the, um, got hold of them there and recorded them. Which Pete Waterman, who uh, managed the specials first first time around, but um, he used to go to the record company and try to say, well. I've got this band called The Specials, but he said nobody wanted to know. Um, so uh, going back to the um, Bananarama, once they had that little thing with us, it was kind of easier for them to get a new a deal. Mm-hmm. So they're fine. They were fantastic. I really liked what they were doing. They were very poppy, but I liked it. I liked it. And they were great girls. It was great to get along with. Great. Yeah. Now, our next question comes from Anastasia, who asks, how did the special beat come about? Well, special beat was after the specials kind of stopped. And myself, I said to Roger, let's get together and let's just call it the specials and the beat. Because you're, I'm in the special, you're in the beat. So basically, that's all it was. We were great friends and we wanted to do not something different, but so it came across different. He would do the beat songs, and I would do the special songs. And some new songs, we used to mix it up. But that got together because me and myself and Roger was friends, and we wanted to try something between the both of us. So that's how Special Week came about. We were yeah. very great friends, me and Roger. Now, uh, not too long after that, the, the third wave of ska is, is, is referred to. Uh, hit in the U.S. Mm. When that happened, what was your first reaction? Well, they like the music all over the world, you know. Because that, when you do this, Michael, I don't think right. I want it, I want it to, to be big, blah blah blah. So when we went to America, it was like whoa. Um, the Americans used to hear about the specials. So when we went there, it was like. Oh God, the specials are here. Fantastic. And when we done put a show on, we used to give it the same energy. So going to America it was quite a nice. Well, it was good. It wasn't nice. It was good. Um, playing to the American crowds. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Now was was the uh did you find there were certain places where the, the fan base was uh really strong for you guys? Um to be honest with you, it's wherever we played because you've got to remember a lot of a lot of rem- um, <clears throat> excuse me. A lot of, a lot of uh, Americans didn't know the special. So if we played in Detroit or New York, LA, we used to kind of get the same books because they already heard of us, they already seen us on uh, TV and stuff like that. So it's like bringing it to other people. Oh, I've got to go and see them. I've heard about them. They're coming from England. Um, great band, blah, 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 blah. So all over America, I think we're, we're okay all over America, to be honest with you. But a lot of people, are you, in the 90s or 80s, I used to live in um, Long Beach for nine years. So I used to bring that, the form of uh, Scar over there with Rancid. No, um, Rancid. Planet Smashers, No Doubt. Oh, gosh, quite a few of them. I've done some videos. I'm, I'm on some of the tracks of uh, the American Ska band when they first started because I was the first one, only one from uh, the specials who was bringing the new, not new music, but bringing the specials music over there when I was living there. So to me, that was fantastic. It was like me bringing the special music while I was living there or the ska music to America. Mainly in Los Angeles, but I still used to travel all over America. But like I said, I used to be in America, um, Los Angeles. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, the uh, get, getting back to the new album. Yeah. Uh, another track on there that I thought was really strong was Something's Wrong. Yes. Something's Wrong is... It's it's kind of weird to explain that. Um, like we said, something's wrong. It's it's about there's something wrong. We don't know what it is, 
Oh, we know what it is. It depends how you look at it. Something's wrong, so what are we going to do? What are they going to do about that? And that that side came from uh, Sugary, my, uh, my wife. Um, so she could have explained that one a bit more to you about uh, that, that track. Yeah. Well, tell me, tell me this. The uh, this one's out. Uh, what, what's your uh, pl- uh, on your schedule moving forward? Oh, Michael, I want to do more shows. They keep they stopped us at two and a half. I just want to keep doing shows. Um, we we need to get this album played on tour. The new album, even if we do six tracks off it, you know what I mean. Eight tracks, as long as we can do some tracks of it. But we can't tell because the last couple of years we ain't been able to do anything. So looking forward to it, I just want to do shows. And then once this album's out, if it does well or if it doesn't, we just keep doing and um, putting EPs out or something. But I won't stop. Somebody said to me, "Going to retire?" I said, "What's that? <laughs> retire? What is retire?" I won't, Michael. I'll, we're just going to keep putting stuff out, even if we can't tour it. We'll do like this one uh, from the specials and beyond. And and that title, you haven't asked me about that title yet. It's, uh, it's, I'm, pr- I'm coming from the special. So from the specials, I'm going further. I'm going away now. So I'm in the, f- the special, so I'm going beyond the specials. So that's where that comes from, uh, from the specials and beyond. Yeah, tell, tell me this. Who is somebody that you've always wanted to uh, record with that you haven't had the chance yet? Mm. You see, like before, there's several people, like The Clash, I would have liked to have done stuff with The Clash. Um, the Dam, I used to like The Dam as well. I'll tell you what, I'd like to have done some stuff with The Sex Pistols. Because I used to like the Sex Pistols, yeah, and the Clash, you know, all the bands like that. I just, just love it. I would, I would have loved to have done some stuff with them, but I yeah, mean, any band, the, the bands nowadays, I can't see. I can't seem to think who I would like to record with uh, in this time. That good deal. Well, tell tell me this, Neville. We, I know we've covered a lot of bases you know, here so far. Is there anything that we haven't touched on yet that you'd want to make sure that we do? No, don't, no anything you want to throw at me? Oh, yeah. I, I don't know. I've been trying. I've had two shows, two tours canceled in uh, America because for some reason I can't seem to get a visa. <laughs> Explain that to me. Because we've had two lots of tours cancelled in America. First, we had um, um, about 30 days uh, worth of tour happening. That went down then two years because I think, okay, the promoters are saying, oh, we're trying to get him over and didn't come. Then somebody, another lot of promoter tried. I just couldn't get a visa. I still can't get a visa. And I, listen, I'm dying to do shows in LA because I know what it's like all over America but I like LA because I used to live there I mean, not because I just live there but I just like it there because I got the uh, my new band Neville, uh, Neville and the Hit but Hit Me if, if most of band, most people would remember Neville Staple and the Hit Men that's what my band was called over there and I would love to go back Michael well, I hope you come through Chicago when you do finally get that visa. Oh, that's why I can't go. So we do in Chicago. Yeah, that, that's that's our area there. Uh, I don't know. Let's let's just keep fingers crossed, Michael. Well, I'm hoping. So tell you what, Neville, on that note, we'll we'll bring this one to a close. We've had your uh website. Going across the yeah. uh, the screen, there, folks can uh, link from there to all your social media. They can get to uh, the new album uh, from yeah. the specials and beyond. Uh, anything else? No, just 
Just kick it out there, Michael. Keep playing it for me. All right. That's it. And um, I like to think that, uh, say, sorry to uh, the American fans that I can't come out there straight away. But hey, check the album out. Well, tell you what, would, would, would you uh, come, can get, get back to the States and do some shows? We'll have you back. Thank you, Michael. Love to be there. Love to. All right. Sounds good. We'll tell you what, on that note, everybody, we're going to wrap this one up. Neville, I want to thank you for taking the time out of your day to join us. Uh, no, no, no problem, Michael. Well, thanks very much, anyway. All right. All right, everybody, thank you very much for watching. Everybody, have a good night. Okay. <laughs> thanks, Michael. This has been Music Night at the Majestic with Michael Boswell. If you enjoyed this edition of Music Night at the Majestic, follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and at musicnight.net. Music Night at the Majestic is a copyright production of Starliner Media. Any use of the accounts and descriptions of this program, its audio or visual content, without the express written consent of Starliner Media is prohibited. Thank you for joining us this evening. We'll see you next time for Music Night at the Majestic. This is your announcer speaking.